Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans. Special edition Rebellion Prediction Show. Real quick, this is Trent, along with my co-host, who is not Kyle, but he's a Long Islander. He is he is the next best thing. He is basically Kyle's neighbor, the legendary, the one and only. Whoopsie, whoopsie, what's going on? Say hello to the people. Yeah, hello to the people, like how Kyle says. <laughs> Whoopsie, this is a long time coming. You're a legend to the Impact Lounge. You're a le- you're you're a lounge legend. And uh Kyle's like you're the only you're the only guy Kyle felt comfortable to take a spot, a fellow Long Islander. Whoopsie, before we start, I got I gotta clarify something though. You, are you a vegan? Are you really a vegan? Or is Kyle making that up? No, he's not making that up. I actually commented it once. Yes. I can't remember what it was. I think it might have been Austin Aries talk. And I just okay. commented it just casually. All right. All right, so whoopsie, officially vegan. You are going to be Kyle's uh, sponsor, basically. He's he's a uh, he's a uh, he's on a new road to to redemption here, man. So uh, he's going to he's going to need all the help he can get. So you might have to drive over to his side of Long Island and slap him around a little bit. The funny but, thing is that he the funny thing is that he already knows a lot about it. <laughs> Maybe he secretly is already. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah, he was giving this. me some he was giving me some tips. I'm like uh, on some places. I'm like I never even heard of that. <laughs> man, he's living a down low. Vegan lifestyle, and he's just he's just bullshitting all of us that he's uh that he's you now he's sending me he sends me pictures of these chili cheese dogs and all this disgusting food you know f- double fried chicken wings I'm like man what are you doing Kyle you're gonna die and he's like yeah you only live once Trey you know you gotta go you gotta li- you live you know live hard die young leave a good looking corpse I'm like all right man I still need a co-host Kyle you know what I'm saying so I mean but, uh, he, he's probably he's probably just woke he's probably what just just he's woke probably up? just woke. No, no, yeah. he's probably just woke. Like a woke person. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just doesn't want to do it. Probably, man. That's probably all it is. Damn, Kyle, you son of a bitch. You're getting called out here. But uh, so while Kyle is off getting hammered on a Friday night, I got Whoopsie here with me. We're going to run that. We just watched the go home show of Impact Wrestling on Twitch. Actually, Whoopsie, how'd you watch? You watch on Pursuit or Twitch? Uh, Twitch. Twitch, yeah, me too. I did like the Don Callis and Scott Demore in between. Those are cool. But um, yeah. so we got a couple more matches added today. We're gonna run it down real quick. Whoopsie and I are gonna give our predictions, and then what we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna give a prediction of a match that might get added. So we're just gonna take a shot in the dark of a match that, or a couple guys that might get added to the show last minute. So we'll do that at the end. We'll run it up here. So I'm gonna kick it off. Whoopsie, I'm gonna go in order of how Impact posted it. So a big one, big feud, Swan and Sammy Callahan. They really hyped it up today. X Division title. This has been going on since Homecoming. So we're about f- almost nearly five months into this. And um, a lot of hype, man. They really, they've really they gone up and down. People have been added, taken out of this. Where do you see this one going, Whoopsie? I see Sammy Callahan finally getting a, a championship. It's been... Over a part like what a year and a half, yeah, yeah, he's uh, a long time coming. Yes, I agree, man. It's been a while for uh, for Sammy, he's been in the company a while already. So, I think, um, I think it's time for him. I think it's definitely time for Sammy to take a time. I'm I'm with you on that one. I also think now, whoops, let me ask you this do you think if Sammy wins, do you think the feud's over? Like, do they move on from this, or do you think this continues into a rematch? and a post story where, like, you know, Swan maybe joins OV eventually. What do you think? I feel like if he, like, the story could still evolve. Um, Don seems like he wants to do the whole uh, long feuds. And yep. I feel like they could take this into Slam Reversary. I, I mean, me. yeah. They could, but also Johnny still has a, a shot at the title. At the exhibition That's right. Title. That's right. He won at United We Stand, which was weird. Yeah. Did you think that was weird too? I thought like, what was the point of him winning that? You know what I mean? That's I thought. Strange. I thought they were going to give it to Ace Austin. That's what I thought. I was like, you're pushing Ace Austin. He's like your next big X Division star, and Johnny wins it while still being champion. I thought that was kind of weird. Yeah. So, and that's the thing. If Sammy wins the belt, it's like you put Sammy and I don't see money in Sammy and Johnny. I just see him as two very different competitors. So yeah, it might just be like a throwaway match. I don't know. It could be just because, yeah, it could be. So we'll see, man. All right. So yeah, we both got Sammy on this one. So this is a Sammy, Sammy and Sammy on this one. Uh, yeah. All right, cool. 
Next one we got. Whoops, we got uh, Taya Jordan Grace for the uh, Knockouts Championship. I think um, I'm gonna let you go first on this one. Actually, go ahead. What do you think about this? Where do you see this one coming out? What do you think? I think Taya will win. Taya's um, gonna retain. Yeah, I think she's gonna retain. Reason being that um, she could take the title into a anniversary against somebody else. Maybe so uh, they might give it to Madison. Which is, Ooh. which I don't think is a good idea. I don't but think so either. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, I don't think this, this is, uh, they're gonna give it to Jordan this, like at this stage. Yeah, I agree with, I think it's a little too early for Jordan. I think it's cool that she's getting the, um, the spotlight, but I don't think she's not, I don't want to say she's not ready, right? But I think it's a little early, right? Yeah. Like she um, just got there kind of, you know, a little while ago. She's, she hasn't done, she, she's earned it, but at the same time, I'd like to see her build it a little more. Yeah, and Taya, you know, she has that whole, the her whole appeal is just her look. Like outside, like not in ring work. It's just like the way she presents herself is. You could just tell that she's like, like a, a character. Yeah, she's a great heel. She she really um, she really uh, makes you you know you want you hate the character. You want her to see her lose. You know what I mean? But she see, she keeps squeaking by and everything. And like you're right, she's not a big technician. Uh, but she, she's a great character and, um, yeah, that, yeah, no, I go ahead. I'm sorry. Especially that Canadian promo that she did yesterday. Like, you know, just talking shit about her own country. Yeah. <laughs> she's yeah, like, like, this is why I left. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, you're Canadian. What are you doing? Um, All right, we, she, she did that whole, um, you know, like when you're in high school, everybody hates, you know, the town that they're from. They say, they always say, I can't wait till I leave. It was yeah, one yeah. of those type of program, promos. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, people like me and Kyle will stay in Long Island. <laughs> you guys are staying lifers, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, what's funny is uh, I found out today. Whoops! I found out that Taya listens to the show because she tweeted. She tweeted us today on the at We Talk Impact on Twitter, and she tweeted us and said she just wrote all she tweeted us was scumbag of the week, and she put an uh, emoji with sunglasses. And I was oh, like, wait a, nice. I was like, wait a minute, you li- I'm like, you listen to the show? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, hold on. And I was hey, like, man, she's probably you? she's probably refreshing the the YouTube page every day. Maybe. Hey, I'm Both down. The hashtag today, late but great. Late but great. <laughs> you bl- <laughs> blame Kyle for this late but great shit, man. I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to roll. Look at me. I'm here Friday night. I'm rolling with you today on a, on a prediction show. I'm ready to roll. Kyle, I got I got an alcoholic scumbag janitor who can never make. Call time for our recording until the last damn minute. And then all those damn sound bites. Oh my God. All sorts of shit. He's got he, he listens to everything, makes sure he everything sounds great. He's a perfectionist. You know? The guy's nuts. <laughs> but late but great. Our plays are still okay. You know, they I, I, I like getting in an early whoopsie so everybody can get to it before the show. But uh, hey, better late than never, I guess. All right. Yeah. So I'm going I'm with you on this one. I think Taya is gonna retain as well, so um, and I think she's there's a lot, a lot of fuel left in uh in her her run right now. I think there's a lot of girls that she is a great heel against, and I want to see there's money in the chase. You know, what I mean, there's money in in yeah. the faces chasing her. So and I the thing with Ty is that, like like we said earlier, she's a great character, but yeah. sometimes maybe she doesn't match up well with some of the other opponent, like the, her other opponents. Right. Like um, I seen her when she first came back to the United States. No, I, I wanna I don't wanna say United States, but when she her first show on Impact, you could tell that she like the lucha influence was um heavier than what it is now. Big time. Big time. Did you watch her in uh AAA? I seen her no, the funny thing is that I seen like some like little clips. The funniest thing is the announcers. Like they had like the whole WCW um Give your whole bio out, be, you know, as you're walking down the down the ring. Yeah, yeah. And then they have like the heel announcers. Like, it's funny. That's funny. I I and I've only seen clips. I know she was in that group with uh, Paraguayer Junior and and Penta, and I forgot who I think was Garza. Might I think Garza might have been in that group. Too. I'm not sure, but she was in there too. Uh, Peros hey, group. Man. So, who else? Um, Paraguayo right now. Penta's in it. I think yeah. they just had a reunion. Oh, they did really. But, yeah, it was. I saw a clip of it. Oh, I think cool. I can't remember where, but but 
Yeah, but triple A is like a million times better if you understand the language. It just it's just funny. I can imagine. I can definitely imagine. Well, cool. Yeah. There's so something. Go ahead. There's something Kyle would like too. Yeah, I think I think he should he should watch, man. I don't know. Kyle's bad at time management. He should get, he get some no, time to watch like, him. It's just like the it's just like the big characters, you know. Like he, um, yeah. we like that whole you know like fun stuff. Like the um like the announcer when he was announcing her, he said he was saying he was basically putting down Mexican women, but <laughs> he was saying like, oh, this is a beauty that you can't find here in this city, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and she's from a place where and, and then he was like and she's from a place that you guys can't go because you have no papers <laughs> and I'm like oh my god <laughs> are you serious yeah is, uh, now I know they show it on Twitch AAA is it is it pretty current is that like current episodes or what they actually do live stuff kind of like impact but um, oh, okay. they actually put like the calendars but they're always on late okay yeah because I do um I did. I did follow that channel too, so I, it, it comes up on my Twitch menu. So I got to check it out more. I do. I toss it on sometimes, and I leave. You know, I let it run. I'm doing stuff in the house, but I want to like sit down and really get into it. So I'm gonna definitely check that out. Definitely check that out for sure. Cool, yeah. man. Awesome. All right, next one we got to tonight. Just announced tonight, we got the Rascals: Des, Zachary Wentz, Trey Miguel taking on Moose and the North, Josh Alexander and Ethan Page. So I thought this was cool because it was a good way to get. These are six major stars of the company. And it's like you needed to get these guys on. And I thought it was a perfect, perfect way they set it up tonight where they had Moose uh, lure the rascals in. And then they had um, had the North attack them and it pretty much turned into this huge brawl. So I think it's a perfect way to get everybody on. Uh, This is going to be a barn burner, as they call it. So where do you see this one going? I mean, I know there's a lot of momentum for both right now, both sides. Where do you think where do you think this one's going to go? I'm thinking that there's going to be a uh, match of the night. Um, yeah, I can see it, man. Th- th- these guys are all, like, top stars right now. Yeah, reason being because this whole thing with uh, Moose and the Rascals, it's been going on for so for a while now. About a it's month. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the show. Same. And, I agree. Um, it can only be better with Wentz being, like, a, the selling master. Yeah. <laughs> what was with Wentz in the pockets today? Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but you seen you seen when I think when Moose throw, throws him to like the walls, you see how his reaction. Oh my god, he's great. His selling is fantastic. Uh when he got punched in the in the circle too. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, last was it last we don't week before last when he fought Moose solo. I was like, man, he was selling. I was I I was in pain watching him. Oh my god. <laughs> like, it's like the funniest thing. Like it's um, you just see him. You, you just think it's like a, it's like one of those uh, things. Like, oh my god, he, this guy has a family type of deal. Yeah, exactly, man. I was hooked. They got they had me hooked on that one. But yeah, uh, I think this is gonna go fifteen minutes at least. Yeah, it has. To. You got a lot of yeah, a lot of names in this. There's six guys, six top guys in this. Got to give it time. You know, they they didn't overbook the show. It's not a lot of matches, so I think you got plenty of time to um. To give all these guys, so I think I think it'd be cool. I'm I'm going with uh, I'm gonna go with the the, the moose in the north on this one because I think they're really trying to push the north. And I think that I keep yeah. them strong. As much as I hate to see the rascals take a loss, I think they just want to make sure the north stays really strong. Uh, and being that they're with moose, I'm gonna go with that. What about you? Yeah, I go with same prediction. Same prediction. Yeah, so. We'll see where that one ends up. I mean, it, honestly, whoops, it, it can go either way. To me, I'll be happy with whoever wins. I just feel like uh, right now Josh Alexander is a top dog. Like they're they're really investing a lot into him, and I think him having a loss, even if it's a tag in the column, is not going to be good. I think um, I think it, you know it's it's little guys versus big guys, so it's a believable loss if the Rascals do lose. So we'll yeah, see where it goes. Yeah, good for all of them. Yeah. It's, it's um, it won't hurt anybody. I don't. I don't think. Right. It'll just be fun. It'll just be an awesome match yeah. to watch. So yeah, no, nobody comes out looking bad on this one. Uh, all right, moves to the next one. Another tag match. This is for the tag team championship. Full Metal Mayhem, LAX, taking on Lucha Brothers. Uh, four of the best people in wrestling today, in my opinion. I don't know. I don't know. Who are you a bigger fan of? Give us, give me a little thoughts on what do you think of these four? Or you know, what do you, uh, 
we'll get to the prediction in a second. But what are you? What's your background on these guys? Do you like them? You seen them live at all or anything? What do you think? Yeah, I seen both live. Yeah. Um, I seen LAX before they went to Impact. So then, so then when I first saw them in Impact, it was funny because my girlfriend was working for this app that and they basically cut down commercials and. Mm-hmm. One of her assignments was Impact. I think that's how that's how I started getting back into Impact in 2017 because she was doing that show. And then I saw them, and I'm like, oh my god! I'm like, I seen them in House of Glory. Yeah, yeah. Like a couple months before. They they had a different name, right? They were going like yeah. I think uh, they had different names and stuff. Yeah, and then, and they were tagging already, right? That's the thing. They were already tagging in House of Glory. Yeah, they were they were tagging um, all over the Northeast as EY FBL. What did that stand for? Do you know what it stood for? I don't remember. Yeah, I saw that once. I was like, what does this mean? But um, so these two, yeah, these two are great, man. I mean, I, I see them at AAW here in Chicago all the time. I get to work with them. Me and Ortiz, we talk hair. We talk conditioner all the time. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's great. But uh, and the Lucha Brothers, man, I mean, th- these this is legendary. These two are, I think, two of the most over- people in the history of wrestling already uh have you ever have you seen the lucha brothers have you met these guys at all and, and they're great dudes man if you've ever met them no i never met them but i think the first time i seen them was uh down for glory oh bound for glory uh this past year yeah yeah man um fact, oh sh- yeah you were there that's right um dude yeah they're great i mean i it's almost like i get spoiled because i get to see him almost every month and then you know work alongside them and everything, and it's it's amazing to me how how incredible they are as performers. And all four of these guys together are unreal. So um, yeah, I've seen this match. I don't know how many times, but the fact that this is a full metal mayhem, and we got a little bit of a tease of that tonight, I think um, I think that's kind of cool. And I'm like, this is gonna they're gonna go to steal the show too. I think these these guys are always out to steal the show, but. I'm gonna make a crazy prediction on this one, Whoopsie. I'm gonna I got a weird one on this one. I know um everybody's already going, well, you know, Lucha Brothers are going to AEW to fight the young bucks and everything. But uh we gotta keep in mind Lucha Brothers have open contracts, and that's just one show. They're not going to sign a contract. So my prediction is the Lucha Brothers are gonna retain on this one. I think they're gonna retain the belts and they'll be back uh to do something again. So I'm going out on a limb on this one. What do you think? I was actually thinking the same thing. I think uh, really? I think Lucha Brothers are gonna retain because, um, yeah, they haven't signed any any contracts with I mean, any contracts with anybody. But right, um, what I've heard from AEW is something that even though it's not exclusive, they don't, they probably aren't gonna want people to wrestle on TV shows for other companies. I don't know how true that is, but I still think that Lucha Brothers are gonna win this match. I think so too. I think they're going to retain, and like I said, I think they're fighting the Young Bucks, and that's that's one pay per view. That's double or nothing. It's one pay per view, and their TV doesn't start for a while, so there's a lot of time in between. And the, the brothers have open contract. Their whole thing is if it fits their dates, they're going to do it. That's just how it works. And I think I just think that they're going to retain this one, man. I just think that they're they're too big of a name to actually be held down to just an exclusive contract. Yeah, they can do whatever the they feel like. They 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 can do whatever they feel like it, and um, I kind of think that I feel like they're gonna win, only because you can't give the title too too many times to LAX. That too, you end up burning it out. If that happens, you know. You, you it's like it becomes like the Briscoes in in Ring of Honor. It's like they've had it like seventeen times. You know, <laughs> it's like, all right, man. Th- you know how special does it feel after a while? You know, you gotta keep it keep it special. I think. Everybody's already thinking the Lucha Brothers are going to uh, lose this one. But it's like, you know what? Twist it. We'll mm-hmm. see them retain it now. Let, then what happens? Then what happens to LAX? Where do they go? You know, you got a lot of story if the Lucha Brothers lose out of this one. That's what I'm psyched about. So the, f- I'm, the, funny, I'm thing, the, the funny thing about the, the whole matchup was that in Homecoming, my mentality was that, all right, whoever loses this match isn't coming back type of thing. I guess mm. I don't know. I don't know for whatever reason I thought it was that that's what's going to happen. Maybe it's a pessimistic, you know, like thought yeah. at the time. But I was like, all right, if Lucha Brothers don't don't win, they're not gonna, they're not going to come back. 
But you know, they proved us wrong. Yeah, they sure and did. They could just yeah, then they could just do a, do whatever they they want. Yeah, I think I man, they're in such a unique position, man, where they can they can they they call their own shot. And that's a great place to be in life, you know, and not just wrestling, but talk about life. You know, you, imagine you can do that, you know, just work wherever you want it to work every day. It's yeah. not a bad deal, you know. <laughs> I can go wherever I want. Um, but the thing is, whoopsie, I, I, I love those two because they're really good good guys, too. And I, I'm happy they got that deal because um, they're nothing but respectful. Uh, when they come to work for us at AEW, they're amazing people. And it's like, man, these are the kind of guys you want to see succeed and I'm happy they're in my number one company. You know, I'm an impact guy, so I, I'm happy they're there, and it makes me happy to see them as a part of it. So that's cool. I, I'm, I'm listen. They retain, and then what? It's almost like everybody's gonna be like, "Well, now what? What happens?" You know, absolutely, man. They could walk out on, on a AEW with these belts. Who knows? You never know what's gonna happen. Wrestling in 2019 is insane. So uh, yeah, but you one never thing know. I do want to see. Yeah, one thing I do want to see is. Um, is the Chris brothers actually going back up? Yes, yes. I think they need to, man. That's a good point because um, they, you know, they they kind of fell into being uh being just part of OVE, and their their focus on a tag team kind of fell off a little bit. And, and the um, crazy thing, yeah. And the Go crazy ahead. thing now is that character wise, they're way better than than their first uh, um, championship run. Big time, big time. Because uh, initially they didn't have Sammy their first run. Right, Sam, after Sammy got there, it's like when they really settled in, and they like found themselves. So yeah, I remember when they first started. I'm like, damn, who are these scrubs? You know, like <laughs> like the way that they were dressed. Yeah, and man. They had like no character. I'm like, I'm like, all right, you know, I guess they're champions. I yeah. mean, they had a cool moves and everything like that, but you know, they they were kind of looking like you know, like um, 2005, you know, like uh, goth type kids. Yeah, and that was a or, problem, like, you know, man. It, it was like, it was like, man, what, how, like, this can't be it, you know, like, we need something more out of these guys, and yeah, you're right, though, man, it was, it was rough, and that was a rough year in Impact in general, creatively, but, um, but, dude, yeah, after, after Sammy got there, it was like a shift, and it's like, man, I want to see this version of them get that run, for sure, because now they've kind of yeah. found themselves a little more, uh, so we'll see, we'll, I, a lot of, again, a lot of possibilities, man, a lot of history between them and Lucha, so if, if they retain, and these guys go for the belts. There's a ton of history, man. So a lot can come out of it. Absolutely. All right, cool. So next one here, we got Tessa taking on Gail Kim. This is a big match. They have put a lot of attention on this one, man. This has been going on since homecoming also. Four-month build, nearly five-month, level upon level upon level. Every week there's a new level to this one. Uh, man, this is one, whoopsie, I had a hard time thinking where this could go. Um, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you take this one first, though. I'm Team Tessa all the way. Uh, I don't know if you've seen, like, my, if you remember the comments that, that um, on the YouTube section. Yeah. But I'm Team Tessa mainly because she's out here to, uh, to make sure she stays retired. Go, Kim. Like, I don't like the whole thing where, you know, people, wrestlers retire, then they come back. Yeah, I'm excited for the match, but you know, it's just it's still that one little thing. Like, oh man, but you retired. Yeah, I agree with you, man. It's it's like either you retired or you're not, you know. And yeah, and coming back so soon, it's like man, she just retired, you know. <laughs> like how soon is this? But um, I think it's Gail's great. Don't get me wrong, she is legend. She is the knockout. You know, she is the knockouts division. She's the she's the first. And yeah, um, she's a mount. Yeah. She's a Mount Rushmore wrestler. Absolutely. And Impact Wrestling, she is up there. She's definitely legendary. But I think the story in this one is fantastic. That this is this is generational. This is the this is the star of the leader of this generation taking on the star of the previous. And I think, I mean, dude, Tessa is tops. I mean, she is the number, I think, in my opinion, the number one women's wrestler in the world today. I think also when Don Cal sometimes he says, you know, she's not just the best women's wrestler. She's one of the best wrestlers, period. And I agree with that. I totally agree with that. And, uh, but I think you're, I'm with you, man. I think Te- uh, Tessa Blanchard is going to take this one. She's going to, she's going to really just get that huge win to show that, you know, this, this is, she is the dominant, dominant woman today. 
And uh, lots of story can come out of that, man. I mean, dude, I, I would even, I wouldn't even mind seeing. Whoops, I wouldn't mind seeing Gail he- shake her hand afterwards and say, "You got it." And you know, even I'll, I'll be down if Tesla knocks her out after that. <laughs> but you know, it'd be cool. It would be cool to see that passing of the torch officially. I want to see what happens with Gail though after the match. Yes, that'd be interesting to see because she she said she quit her um, backstage job. Like, what happens to her? You know, does, does Gail? Does, does, does Tesla turn face? I mean, a lot, again, so much can come out of it. You never know. Hey, uh, but you, you're right, though. What yeah. happens to Gil? Yeah, leave it up to Impact Management, whoever that is. Yeah, I'm. I'm curious. I'm sure they got a good plan in place. Whether no, either way it goes, but uh, definitely Tesla on this one, man. De- I want to see a good passing of the torch. This is a. It's got a great story built in. Plus, um, oh. plus Gail, man, dude, Gail is a very unselfish wrestler, as we know. She's she's extremely. Uh, she knows she does the best for the company. So she is definitely one of those that she gets it. You know, she's gonna she's gonna do what's best for for the company and the division. And uh, I, I got nothing but confidence. And, she, and you know, she can still go, as we know, she can still go. She she's moving. She's getting involved in these brawls. So we know, like, there's no doubt she can go. So yeah, we'll she doesn't look like she's lost a step. Not at all. Not at all, man. So um, all right. We got a live smoke show that got announced tonight. I don't know what that is. What do you think that is? Let's take a let's take a prediction on this. <laughs> this could be one of many things. Hey, maybe they maybe they they uh, spent the big bucks and got Scott Steiner back. That could be Scott Steiner gets to finish that lap dance from Homecoming. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I I got an odd feeling. Killer Cross gets involved in this somehow. I don't know. It's just a ra- it's a really random thought, but you know, her and Cross are a couple, and they're they they do stuff on in AAA and everything. So maybe this is where Killer Cross joins her, but maybe not. That may come come to think of it, they might not want to muddy that up just yet with Cross. I, mean, I hope not. Yeah, I don't think it fits here. I don't think it fits here. You know, because no, Cross in a whole other like, realm. It seems like every couple, you know, is a uh, like. They eventually convert them into an on-screen couple, yeah, but, which they shouldn't do. I just I feel like they're gonna introduce somebody new here. Somebody new, okay, all right. I'm 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 open to that. That'd be cool. I mean, uh, paper is a good time to introduce a new person. So yeah, I'd be I'd be open to that. Um, or she gets challenged to a match. They can go either way. But uh, so we'll see. I'm guesses are out for that one. All right, so let's do this before the main event. Let's take our guess for what's going to be added to the show. What do you predict? I got one already. If you need, you need a second to think about. It. I got one in mind already. I'm thinking right. Rosemary Sue Young gets added to the show. Like, uh, I just feel like the, it's like we didn't get a resolution tonight either, and it's like you kind of leave it open ended. Like we need to kind of wrap or get to some kind of point with that one after tonight. So I'm thinking Rosemary Sue Young gets added. That's a lot of women's matches for one show, which you don't not, don't normally see on um on a show, but with this few matches. But I'm gonna go with that one, and then I, I I'm predicting appearances by Jim Mitchell, Kevin Sullivan. So we'll see. That's my prediction. What do you think? You think it's a match or a seg- or a segment? I'm gonna go with a match. I'm I, I'm gonna think it's a, I'm, I'm gonna say a match. I'm all uh, for if it's a match, but uh, maybe throw in Kiera in there for some type of involvement. Okay, so Kira gets involved too. All right. Okay. Yeah, because we don't know their actual roles in this feud. Right. That's the thing. Who's the heel? Who's the face? What is happening on this one? We left it very open tonight. And it's like, I kind of want to see a little bit of resolution. Now, here's the thing, Whoopsie. I feel that we're a match short because we were supposed to get Eddie and Eli. You know what I mean? And I don't know if you caught this, but like, they they kind of wrote Eli off in a weird way tonight. Did you catch this? Because I was actually driving. It was, I was actually driving back home in in a thunderstorm. Oh, I did have the I did have the impact in the background in my car on okay. my phone, but I did see that part. But I can't. I was gonna ask you how did it end. I just remember that he had, and then it's a missed opportunity with the whole Eli leaving the company thing because yeah. this guy already had had like. This new type of gimmick with holding the mic with, with a stick. Oh, it's great, man! So good. He came out with it today. So what they did was they um, 
they had you know, they brawled. Eddie and Eli start brawling, and mm-hmm. Eddie chases Eli out of the arena. They're brawling, chases him out of the arena. They go to commercial. They come back and they show a clip of what happened during the break. And Josh says, uh, Eddie Edwards has chased Eli Drake out of the building. They ran after him. And the last thing we saw was he was running into the night like a coward. You know, and like basically, I think that was it. Like he said, oh, the last we no. saw of him, the last we saw of him is running into the night like a coward. Like, like a coward you know, like, and I'm like, damn, that's it. I think that's, that's it. That's how you write him off. It's just like, you, that's the last we saw of him. It, it was very casual. Very casual because they're not trying to bring attention to it, but at the same time, it's like we needed that match because I was there live at these tapings and I saw it. I saw it all go down. So um, I was, you know, it, it, it led up to it. It was a perfect setup for these guys to have the match. So, I, you know, it kind of sucks that Eddie gets screwed out of it. So I don't know, man. Maybe Eddie gets added to something. I imagine they'll find a way if if all the guys are there, but that's a bummer, man. So, yeah, there is... There's room for one. There's even room for like another one too, I think. But uh, but that's how they wrote off Eddie and Eli, unfortunately. But uh, all right, here we go. Whoopsie. Main event time. Johnny Impact, Brian Cage, Lance Storm, special referee. This one is four months in the making. And man, like you saw, like you said on the YouTube comments on the, on the Impact Lounge channel, guys. You guys can follow us on the Impact Lounge on YouTube. Leave your comments on the on the weekly podcast there. We read them out. We interact. Whoopsie had left a comment that said, this guy can't catch a break, Brian Cage. And you're right, man. Week to week, Brian Cage gets screwed. Where do you see this one coming out? Hey, man, for this match, I just want to see, like, all the, all the stops. Um, I, think, uh, I think Brian Cage is going to win. But I want, but I think Johnny, I think Johnny Bravo is going to play a huge role, and even Taya. But that's it. that's what I want to see out of this match. Um, like when he turned, I thought that was great. Like if you pepper it oh, so a good. couple times a year, you're golden. Yep. Yeah, I I think man, I'm with you. Brian Cage has to take this, but yeah, I want to see pull everything out. Give me twenty. I'll even take twenty five minutes, man. Give me a long match where you they just beat the shit out of each other and you keep you milk it to that end and you just get everybody in a frenzy because I would love to see this go off the air with Brian, especially in that arena. Whoopsie, that Rebel Complex. You imagine that you know that shot that they do with the lights and everything and the and the ceiling. Imagine him holding the belt right there and going off the air. Perfect. I want to. I just want to see it all. I want to see like people, you know, interferences, you know, like ref bumps. Hmm. Who are, they, who are they gonna have? Kid, you know, Kid Ref. Kid Ref is there. You got Brandon Tolley. but yeah, man. I mean, uh, you can't have Bravo, right? I mean, I'm sure they'll find a way to work him in, though. I think, like you said, I think you're right. They're gonna, they're gonna try. They're gonna make us think that this is gonna be a shit show, you know, again. But uh, I think hopefully he prevails and he comes out like a real, like a star on this one. So, Def, I'm with you on that, Brian Cage. This should be fun, man. Um, I think. Uh, Tonight was a nice example of it. That six man was was awesome. I thought that was really cool. Hey, you know, was, one thing that stood out to me was that Johnny Bravo was good at doing this because I understand that he was a wrestler before, right? He was. He was a wrestler before. Actually, I uh, I talked to him and he he knew he used to wrestle back in the day with uh, the owner of AAW, who I work for, Danny Daniels. They used to wrestle together back in the day and uh, up in BCW, which is. Uh, uh, Scott DeMore's promotion and everything. They used to wrestle up there and stuff. So he was a wrestler. He was actually a pretty decent wrestler, from what I understand. I I loved, I loved what he did today. You know, with his uh, pulling kid ref out. I'm yes. like, Oh my god. I I don't think it's the last we've seen of it. I think there's going to be more of that at the pay per view. I don't know uh, what it is, but you know, the the older I get, um, the more I like that kind of you know like stuff. But I, I went through like the early twenties with the whole um, I only want to see like pure wrestling, you know, ROH type of stuff, which I I still like. But you know, now I like seeing like the whole character thing, the Absolutely. whole big thing that. <laughs> because you can appreciate how, how pulling it off, you know, like yeah, matches, work rate matches are are fun, but not every match should be that. You know, you need to have those character builds, those twists and turns. That's what keeps it interesting. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm with you, man. I'm I'm definitely with you on that. 
Uh, I think this will be really cool. There's there's a lot of moving parts in this feud. Bravo, Taya, um, you know, even Melissa Santos. They kind of tease her a little bit, you know, like in, implying the cage was cheating on her with Jordan Grace. I mean, they, they got a lot of moving parts in the in this feud, man. So I thought I, they were going to play up to that today too. I thought so too. I really thought you so know too. in the segment, the workout segment. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, right? But um, no go. Santos was not there, so I was uh. I don't know. The no, deal I, was I don't mean that she was gonna be there. I thought that maybe Johnny was like you know in the same. No, not Johnny. Uh, Brian Cage was in the same gym. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just um, came in like, hey man, you know, <laughs> like he's he's like fuck, like spotting her and shit. And <laughs> I uh, yeah, we. It's, I feel like we almost needed that again just to kind of further that so people didn't forget. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, man. Again, a lot of moving parts, so we can see a lot going on. But that's uh, yeah, that, that that'll do it, man. I think uh. I think I'm not. I won't be surprised if even one more match, aside from the one we guessed, will be added. Uh, I'm gonna. I would recommend everybody keep their eyes peeled on Saturday and maybe Sunday morning for like a last minute announcement, because Impact's done that in the past where they've added like an opener, you know, or something to uh, to the pay per view to kind of give it that last push. So uh, definitely keep an eye for that, guys. But uh, whoopsie, I think that's that's uh, that's everything, man. Did we had we miss anything? Uh, no, maybe just Rolando. Orlando Menendez, <laughs> you know, throw him in there. Yeah, yeah throw, that, throw that fucker in there too. Let, let him <laughs> let him squeeze around and get some get some dirt on people. Uh, he's good, man. Orlando's awesome. <laughs> but uh, well, that's gonna do it, man. Hey, listen, real quick, yeah, we just want to get these predictions out. Um, you know, I got uh, I got a great Long Islander and a fellow Long Islander here to to cover for that scumbag alcoholic Long Islander of mine. But uh, I got a clean cut. Good honest man over here to give me some some proper predictions, <laughs> but uh, whoopsie man, why don't you tell people where they can find you, connect with you online, follow you and everything throughout your handles? Pretty much uh, Twitter and Instagram, whoopsie w h u p s i e. Nice, nice. What's the background? What's the background of your uh, your username? It's actually from drinking. From drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Underage drinking. You know, so you're, you're talking about Kai and I was like, I'm tagging in for tomorrow. <laughs> here I am putting that bastard down for being a scumbag alcoholic. And here I find out. God damn it, whoopsie. <laughs> hey, man, you know, it, yeah, there's some of that. There's some of that scumbag in you too. Yeah, it's true, man. I'm I'm a, I'm a scumbag too. We're all scumbags you know, here. <laughs> you know, me uh, and him, Long Islanders. You yeah, know, man. <laughs> scumbag by birth. <laughs> Chicago's no better, man. I live, I live in the murder capital of the, of the country here, man. <laughs> hey, man, you know, I, that's what I started noticing. I'm like, you know, Long Islanders, we're like professional shit talkers, you know, toughest skin, you know, in the country. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> but, I know but I see that you can hang too, like, you know, people from Chicago. Man, dude, this is, this is a tough town. It's a very tough town to live, live in sometimes. But, uh, yeah, listen, I guess I guess we all got our scumbag side to us. <laughs> but, uh I you know personally, I always thought your screen name was um was from Mortal Kombat. When that I don't know if you played Mortal Kombat back in the day when when you would do a certain move, there was like a guy who would come in off the side screen and he'd go whoopee or some yeah, shit like that. No, it actually ties in from that. <laughs> it is? Oh really? Yeah. That's what I thought. I was like, I was like, I thought it was from you know, whoopsie. <laughs> Whatever when that guy would pop in. <laughs> it's um basically long story short short, it's from underage drinking and Mortal Kombat. You know, there that, we go. that you know, with that drop. I wasn't totally wrong. See, I was not totally wrong. <laughs> All right, Kyle, are you hearing that? You got you got to put that soundbite in here now. We need the whoopsie soundbite in there. But uh, did you know that you could, when that guy would come in and say, if you hit like select, it would go, take you to a whole new level, like a whole secret level. I found that out. It was like it was like a hidden level that you would you it would take you to if you hit like select and something. So I didn't know any. I didn't know the 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 cheat codes. You know, you know who actually knew the cheat codes for that game. Was that? It was uh my aunt. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, I used to go over to my cousin's house, and we would always be like, "Oh, um, could you put this, the cheat code for us?" Because we were like five, six years old. <laughs> and just kind of get the adult to put the cheat code in. <laughs> you know, Long Island yeah. scumbags, you know, you know, buying a rated <laughs> mature game for kids. Yeah, man. Listen, you know, that's bad. I had a uh, Mortal Kombat one on Super Nintendo. I had Super Nintendo. It had no blood on Genesis. That had blood, 
And then everybody outraged on Super Nintendo. So for Mortal Kombat 2, they put in blood. But I was like, everybody thought I was a, everybody thought I was a wuss, man. They're like, man, you got the Super Nintendo version where it's sweat <laughs> and it's not even blood. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and then there was a well, rumor. Yeah, it was, right? Yeah, there was a rumor that, oh, there's a code to get it to be blood. And, man, you know, there was no internet back then. This is all word of mouth rumors. And <laughs> there was never a code, man. Part 2 had blood, you know, though. <laughs> you know, they discovered like a, like a secret menu actually not too long ago. Oh, really? Where, no, it's, I don't know if it was a menu, but it was just like a video that that um, showed every fatality, you know, consecutively, like a video, like on YouTube. Really? And it was in the game? It was like built in? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I didn't know. Nice. And now we know. have the internet and YouTube, so you could just... Yeah, you just watch it. <laughs> you don't even need the game anymore, man. But, uh, well, cool, man. Let me plug it up for the show here. You guys can follow me at Vanilla Joke on Instagram and Twitter. Follow my band, Hemi Music, on Instagram and Twitter. Our song, Decay, played like 10 times on the episode tonight. And uh, yeah, I was like, a... dude, it was all over. It was yeah, it was like a, a wild Hemi song appears. Yeah, man. Thank you. Uh, it, dude, it was every every uh, Rebellion commercial, uh, it was playing in the background, and, and they kept looping it. So um, that was awesome, man. So yeah, guys, check that out. The song's called Decay. I got a link to it on the uh, Hemi Music Twitter take a listen it's the uh it's the song of the pay-per-view so um check that out and you can follow the show at we talk impact on instagram and twitter connect with us on all those as well as i'm sorry and uh facebook just type in we talk impact or type in total Nonstop impact comes right up connect with us get a hold of us give us your feedback you can find this podcast wherever podcasts are found apple itunes stitcher soundcloud google play iHeartRadio, radio tune radio spotify and YouTube featured on the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. Connect with us there. Leave a comment. This is Whoopsie's debut. Leave a comment. Let us know how you think he did. Whoopsie, I appreciate you being on, man. That was awesome. Thanks for thanks for jumping in and um, giving your predictions on this. We'll see what happens. Are you ordering it on uh, traditional pay-per-view, Fight TV? How do you order a pay-per-view? Fight TV. Yeah, me too. I just got into this Fight TV thing, man. It's pretty cool. It's a whole court cutter thing. Yeah, I know. I, I didn't have a code for it. I I ordered United We Stand. I I paid full price, but I guess there's no, codes. I mean, like, and... It's the the whole cord cutter thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, cord cut. My bad. Yeah, yeah. You're right. It's it's just the same. I mean, quality was good. There was really no there's really no difference. Um, in in using this, so I was like, yeah. I, I listen. I wouldn't even have cable. It, it, the place I live, the building I live in, I get cable included. If I didn't have it, I would never. I would never even bother because you can get I everything. Just... Man. I just get my parents' uh, login information and just sign in from there. There you go. That works too. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be fight TV during this, and uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to. It. I'm hoping Kyle and I can get on and do a review like that night. That'd be nice. Uh, if at the worst, we'll do it the next day, but we'll definitely get a review out for you guys of Rebellion once that's up, and uh, see how it does, man. See how the predictions held up. So, whoopsie. Thank you again, man. We appreciate it. Guys, check us out online, and we'll be back with you after Rebellion. See you later.